Uh, yeah, let's go out to the prairie. Really? It's like a nice cool day today to do some work. These students are heading outside to learn a few things about the world around them. Spray your ankles. Today, their classroom is about the size of a tennis court with grass, bugs, and as much biodiversity as they can shake a rake at. This is Wolf Prairie at Westside High School. It was going to be a third student parking lot, and fortunately for everyone, uh, HIC kind of ran out of money to fund the paving of that parking lot, and so it was just left as is. Let's find spots for those milkweeds and put them in the ground. Wolf Prairie is a pocket prairie. Milkweed plant. It's the food that monarchs eat. A small replica of the once wide open coastal prairies of Texas. Our vision for this prairie is that eventually we get back to what it was 250 years ago, which would have been six to nine foot tall grasses mixed with forbs and other wildflowers, plus a few baseballs. <laughs> Having a, a prairie here on campus enables us to bring students out during the school day. We don't have to rent a bus. Anybody remember what these plants are? We just walk them outside and we have access to wild spaces. Why burning the prairie would have been helpful for its biodiversity? It's going to kill off invasives and then nutrients into the soil. I like to refer to it as the original classroom. The human mind is wired to be attentive to this. This is uh, called tickle tongue or iron wood. You get this weird tickling and numbing sensation on your tongue. This small pocket prairie has made a big impact on students like Akash. Even if I don't get to use this in my career, I definitely plan on being active in the community. Oh, hey you guys, come see, there's a black swallowtail larva here. This is a black swallowtail caterpillar, mm -hmm. and it's just an example of um, how these little prairie patches, even though they're relatively small from a landscape scale, can be really great for pollinators. And you feel calmer, you said? Jaime Gonzalez calls himself a relationship counselor. I'm trying to fix a broken relationship between people and nature. I think we're working in a hybrid world. Technology is cool, but that nature, which is very ancient and a part of us, I think needs to be a part of our lives too because it, it keeps us grounded and healthy. That is the message behind author of Last Child in the Woods and co-founder of the Children in Nature Network, Richard Louvre. He explains the nature deficit disorder how a lack of exposure to nature can dull the senses and be harmful to one's health. Finally, the people who study child development began to pay attention to the question of how does experiences in nature shape childhood. It's going to be good. Studies ongoing at the University of Illinois, for instance, show that kids with just a little bit of contact with nature just to walk through trees in an urban park and the symptoms of attention deficit disorder begin to go down. The kids in the green schools did far better on standardized test scores. If children have less and less experience with nature, who will be the future stewards of the earth? The Katy Prairie near Houston has diminished from 600,000 acres to just 200,000. Now the Katy Prairie Conservancy has partnered with at least a dozen schools that have put in pocket prairies. This is exciting. We're going to be letting these uh, different kinds of grasshoppers go. Across town at the Coulter Elementary School's pocket prairie, these students are getting a lesson about the ecosystem. It's pretty cool because it has the red legs. Yeah, so those are kind of uh, like claws that help it grip onto stuff when it's jumping. Grasshoppers do a lot of things out on the prairie. They provide food for lots of other organisms like birds and mammals and other insects. They recycle nutrients on the prairie back for plant growth. <laughs> but I try to emphasize the good things that insects do and I think bringing them out and letting them touch bugs and showing them that when you hold bugs, not all of them are gonna bite. They actually do good things. I like to go out in the prairie and garden to grow plants because really nobody really wants to just sit in a class and see the textbooks. They want to interact with and see all of them up close in real life. Yeah, I love it. It's actually kind of cool because Michonne, she's actually the one who does, who did most of it. It's actually kind of, it's kind of impressive. It used to look like this. Four years later, now it looks like this. Our idea was to let's just take a small amount and try to put back the plants and grasses and flowers that used to be here. 
before urbanization. These are all going to be tall, like up to here. After decades of teaching, Ali and Sean got busy planting. I'm their, the Coulter Pocket Prairie Guardian. We call him Bison Bob, <laughs> named after my husband. And she's passionate about the prairie. They'll have all these tall yellow flowers. See these, these ones right here, like all of these and these. They're going to be big, tall ones, lots of yellow on them. And then these grasses, like these are going to be, these are going to be tall. And this Indian grass is going to be tall with these golden waving seed heads. Some of them are like over my head. And so it's going to be great. And as much as she loves the prairie, it's what prairies do for us that gets her excited. Prairies actually really do a lot of good for the environment. You know, they sequester carbon dioxide, they hold water, and the, the, all the prairie wetlands filter the water, so they help clean the water. So prairies really have a lot to offer to people. And people, of course, have a lot to offer to the prairies, especially saving them. Even businesses are realizing the benefits of a prairie. Why do we even have gardens at MD Anderson? And the underlying purpose, no matter what we do, is to create a positive distraction from the burdens of their care and treatment and to reduce stress and stress patients. And that's just what we do with the parks and gardens. Conservation groups have, have got to start putting nature where people are. This is one of the most heavily trafficked places in the whole Houston region, the Texas Medical Center. And so in addition to saving these big grand places like the Katy Prairie, we need to help people in the community find places right where they live and work to have nature. You see them? If you like see them through the glass? We're doing research right now in terms of how big of a grassland do you have to have an impact? But I will tell you this, for that one monarch that was passing by, just having access to a few flowers to fuel up on before it heads on, that's big enough for that monarch. Anytime we can situate a small patch of it anywhere, I think is a victory. 